To avoid scope creeping and gold plating, it's important to carry out requirements gathering analysis and sign off. Requirements gathering is an important aspect of project management as it guides the entire project activities. And this includes the solution architecture and design. It includes the project plan and timeline, and also now the output of the activities of the project, which could be in terms of data visualizations. Welcome to Data Talks with Lauren. My name is Lauren Anduvare, and I will be taking you through today's episode, which is in regards to requirements gathering. I've been a project manager for about uh, seven years now, and that spanned from my role being a data analyst and data engineer in the projects I, I did before. So this has always overlapped when I'm doing projects and I've been involved in requirements gathering, which is the role of a business analyst. So sometimes I double up as that. So what I'm going to take you through is some of the things that I've been able to pick up and also build over these years interacting with different clients in the different industries, which include energy, financial industry, we include NGOs, and then education, just different industries that have been doing data projects. So first thing that I will tell you about, prepare questions. Questions are key because this is what, when you're interacting with the audience or rather the client, you'll get to ask them what kind of things um, they want to see in a data project as outputs. So preparation is key. So when you're preparing, think of it as a business uh, side and also as a technical side, because the audience will be different and they, you need to attend to both, right? So as a business side, it will help you understand the culture, it will help you understand the uh, processes that are involved in the business, and it will also help you understand the just overview what they do as a business. On the technical side, on the other hand, will help you understand um, the data bit how it flows, um, what kind of access you have, the security that is involved and all that. So question preparation is key. And I'll take you through another episode where we'll have tips on the questions that you should in, in, in the question preparation uh, stage. Step number two, once you've prepared the questions, now you need to set up sessions. You could do this by using a booking um, app. Booking app means you send this booking app to the client and then let them select sessions, maybe timings in between uh, specific days that you'd like them to be available for a session. So booking helps in that they don't overbook or they don't overlap in terms of the timings that um, they select. So as you're doing this, have an agenda, send them an email, tell them what is expected of them prior to the session. So in, in terms of like what's expected of them, like what uh, kind of documents they should come with, if possible, you can send even the questions that you prepared in the stage one for them to start familiarizing with them and have answers by the time they're coming to have this session. So as you're doing this also, just uh, have in mind the technical bit and the business side. So you need to separate these sessions. So like, for example, you wouldn't have a CEO and an ICT guy sitting in the same session because they won't relate to the kind of information or rather the kind of questions that you are asking each of them. So split the sessions in such a way that you get maximum value from the whoever attends the different sessions. So you can segment these sessions by now taking a look at who is this uh, that is required of this session. But as you're doing that, also involve the PM of the project on the client side and also involve the IT team because uh, the PM will set the agenda and the tone when you come into this session. And then the IT team will help confirm that indeed there's that data to support whatever output the business users would like to get from uh, this data project that you're doing. So once you've done that, it's now short time, step number three. So everyone is here. Um, we have a meeting in such a nice setup, for example, and you are now uh, on to the asking questions, which is the main agenda for this session. So when you're doing this, uh, first of all, you stick to the plan. Stick to the way you arrange the questions. When you, re when you watch the video on the tips, you'll understand what I'm talking about in regards to the flow of the questions and all that. But basically ask all the questions. And during this session, you might as well ask for a data dictionary. Data dictionary basically explains as a business, for example, if it's a SACO or a financial institute, what reports 
uh, is needed and then under that report, the terminologies that are involved and what, how they define these terminologies. For example, if I want to say member ID, how do we get member ID? If I want to say customer, I want a, a, an analytics on customers. So for customers, I'll say maybe I want uh, the location of these customers. I'd like to see the branch this customer registered in and like to see if it's an active or a dormant customer, how they're performing in terms of their loans, things like that. So all these you ask are defined in a data dictionary, which you should ask when you're doing these sessions. Something else you should ask for is sample reports, because previously maybe they're using Excel. If they have that information in an Excel, what the, the purpose of asking this um, sample uh, Excel is to make sure you capture whatever they're currently using because it has worked for them over years. Remember, this is a transition it's from Excel, for example, to now a, a Power BI or a Tableau or whichever tool you're using. So you want to capture, to ensure that you're capturing their basics before adding to them what maybe might be useful to them so that they don't feel foreign or they don't reject what you end up or reject, I see what I did there. They don't, <laughs> they don't have, end up uh, having something that is not useful to them. So sample reports are important and also they come in handy after you've done the visualizations, you're confirming with this Excel, for example, which is the original source. If the number here is 10,000, when you're doing the analytics report, after all those processes of engineering, ETL, you know, that whatever the data engineer does, the extraction, transformation, and loading, that you're also receiving 10,000 at the end. So it's used also as a guide in terms of just confirming that numbers are correct. So basically, that's the agenda of the session. You've asked everything you need to ask. You've involved everyone. They've confirmed the data is there. So now all these things that you write down, how important is to take notes, by the way, because you need these notes to refer to when you're now going to the next step, which is step four. So step four basically involves having your team, whoever was involved in the sessions, internally discussing. But they, um, the example I'm giving is basically from an external consultant coming to a client site. So that's why I'm referring to an internal team. So internal team refers to now me and my team coming together to now discuss what did you understand by whatever was required of the customer analysis report. Me, I understood they want the customer profitability, I understood they want the dormant customers, active customers, you, what did you understand? And what fields are supposed to be uh, extracted from this? Then if it's customer analysis, then it means the name of the customer, it means the account number of the customer, it means the agenda maybe, because maybe they want to see the agenda of the customers that they have and etc. So basically analyzing is just you as a team going through the things that were talked about in the session, comparing notes, and then compiling all these different notes and then putting them in another document, which is the main, uh, the other document that will come in handy in the next step. So now you've analyzed, you've gotten everything as a team, you made sure that you've not forgotten something. Now you move to requirements documentation. Requirements documentation is now putting these things down because remember the agenda is to sign off eventually with the client to confirm that you've understood the requirements and that whatever you sign off again is will be used to build the other documents like the timeline and the projects plan. So basically now we have a document that is probably segmented. How I do it is I have an executive summary. And then I also have like uh, about the document, like what is behind the project, what's the agenda of the project. Because remember this document can be received by someone else in the institution of this client site. Maybe the CEO now wanting to just have a look at what the project about, what requirements were gathered, just to confirm it aligns with the company policies. So once you have this document, you've written um, everything. So executive summary about the project, uh, background information, then now I do it based on departments. So I put a section that is detail, detailing maybe uh, say HR department, what is the agenda of their reports, what kind of reports they said they want to see. And then we have like, for example, marketing department, you have finance department, which is actually big in most of these institutions that I've worked with, whether it's an NGO, whether it's a financial institution, we have credit department, for example, we have trade and finance, it could be anything, right? So now, we, I segment that in terms of the questions and what I do, something I've come to learn over time is to put a sign off area 
below the after like let's say one department i put a section for the department head because initially uh, during my earlier years of project management i used to put it in the last page but then that meant but that one person signing off means maybe someone else didn't confirm their part but now i learned to put it in different sections so that department one the area of sign of department two the area of sign of and etc for the rest so that way they're countersigning on what they said or if they have any additions by the way they are feel they feel free to uh, reach out to you and tell you oh by the way you forgot this or i'd like also this to be added so this is now the essence of the document you now share it out to the business users who is the on the client side it could be even your internal users as a company because some companies have internal data analysts so you share this with the company or the other business users and then let them go through this uh, document let them now confirm that indeed this is what i said i want so that now you have 10 requirements from HR, you have 50 from finance, you have from uh, whichever department, 30. So now you're sure you have a list of 80 reports which are now going to inform the timeline. So remember the timeline could be that it's a project of three months or five months or whichever. So now you need to work around that as a project manager in terms of how now do I fit these 100 reports into this timeline? So if it's two months, how do I squeeze it? Or will I need more resources? That's why I was saying it's important, it's crucial because it ties down to this bit. So now the documentation also informs things like the architecture because now you now know as a technical ICT team, they confirm maybe some things in terms of maybe the infrastructure that they have. So if once they confirm if it's being set up on cloud or on premise, then you will know from whatever they have, which is maybe on premise, it's now moving to the cloud which kind of cloud vendor are you using? Is it Azure, is it AWS? So now you set up, and now with that information, you're able to come up also with the solution architecture. And this is something they always want to see so that they understand what is the security bit that is involved and uh, things like that. And just to understand what are you doing really? How is this data moving from their environment to whichever environment it is? So that guides that. The requirements gathering rather, it also guides such things right aside from the timeline aside from the project plan it also guides things like now the architecture which is a document on its own we can talk about that later in another episode if you want to know more about that but anyway so now once you've handed over the documents they have signed off technically you're good to go because all these processes have been taken care of so again reminder that it's crucial very crucial to do requirements documents um and do a sign off on the documents that's it ladies and gentlemen for today's episode tune in to the next episode to just have a um you know a, an overview of some of the tips that i've used in my previous projects to guide the question bit so that you ensure a successful project that's it see you in the next episode bye